All right, all right, all right. Chinese electric car sales. Who were the winners? Who were the losers? There's some very clear winners and losers. There's some interesting trends. BYD is now officially the largest seller of electric cars worldwide this year. Didn't happen until this month. So if you've read in the media that they were already beating Tesla, no, 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 no. Wrong, not true. But it did just happen in November. Neo sales? Uh, Xpeng sales? Uh. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. BYD, it smashed it again, but didn't have an increase on October. So for the first time in a very long time, BYD didn't beat its previous month's sales, which is quite a surprise to some analysts, or including myself. The reason that I find a surprise is because BYD offered discounts on every single car they sell, and not just once. In fact, it discounted some of its cars multiple times during the month of November, it says it's because it wants to pursue a very aggressive pricing policy. It, basically, BYD said, uh, we want to decimate legacy auto. This is how we're going to do it. We don't care if we don't make any money. That's pretty much what BYD is saying. And that's that's very alarming if you are competing against BYD. BYD delivered 301,000 electric cars. Plug-in hybrids were 130,000 of those. Fully electric vehicles were 170,000. EV sales therefore grew by 50% versus the same month last year. Plug-in hybrid sales only grew by 12%. Plug-in hybrids, well, clearly you can see sales growth of plug-in hybrids is declining. In fact, plug-in hybrid sales were lower in November than what they were in October. Discounts didn't matter. Plug-in hybrids have had enormous problems in China. This is not exaggeration. It's purely fact, backed up with statistics, which are reported by the Chinese government. In fact, the five most complained about cars in China this year are all BYD plug-in hybrids. So steer clear of them. You don't need to because BYD doesn't sell anything except EVs, which are very, very good. The complaints have not been about BYD's EVs. They've been about plug-in hybrids that BYD sells. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, who was next? Well, next up was actually Lee Auto. Lee Auto came second so far. I think GAC and Tesla could potentially or very likely will beat Lee Auto in terms of sales in November, but we haven't seen their numbers yet. They won't be released for a little while to come. Most likely though, GAC will come in third place and Tesla will come in second place. Lee Auto was next. 41,000 deliveries, which is a really, really good month for Lee Auto. Unfortunately though, almost all of those were plug-in hybrids. Either way though, that's still growth of 173% for Lee Auto versus last year. And it means that so far this year, the company has delivered more than they predicted they would, 326,000 vehicles. And they have just revealed the Lee Auto Mega, which is a really, really cool looking seven seat MPV, seven seat van. That's their first fully electric car. Next was Xpeng. Xpeng had, I believe it was their best month ever by the total sum of 39 vehicles, but things have completely changed for Xpeng. Ever since the Volkswagen Group purchased 5% of the company, suddenly their sales have skyrocketed. It's almost as though it's like a partly a brand perception thing here. I've been saying here now for, what, two years, longer, that Xpeng sells really good cars for the price. I could just couldn't understand what the problems were with Xpeng. There hasn't been reported problems with their cars in China. By all reports, they get good reviews from buyers, but for some reason, they weren't selling. Suddenly, that has changed. Over the past few months, Xpeng has had some amazing sales results compared to their last 12 months, which were not that good. 20,000 deliveries for Xpeng this month, 20,000 deliveries for Xpeng last month. So no real growth compared to last month, but big growth compared to last month. Yeah. Next was Ato. So Huawei and Ato, they're kind of like a joint venture. They actually delivered 18,830 electric cars, which is to me a surprising result. I mean, it's not really a company that's well known in China. I mean, Huawei is really not really known. They're more known for phones and for other products, other digital products. But when it comes to EVs, they're not really a known quantity. But as you can see, they are selling pretty well. They nearly sold as many vehicles as Xpeng, and no one even talks about them. Very strange. They actually did really well the month before that as well. Leap Motor was next. Leap Motor has had a meteoric rise over the past few months. They've drastically improved their fortunes. They had a shocking January this year. 
they barely sold any cars at all in January. They only sold like, I think it was about a thousand cars. Complete collapse. Everyone went to sleep, maybe they're all, but anyway, I mean, you'd think, it's only January, but they had a shocking February as well. Pretty, pretty average March. All of a sudden they have rebounded. 18,508 deliveries, which is an all time record for them. They sold 18,000 cars the previous month as well. Now we don't talk about Leap Motor as well outside of China, but as you can see, Leap Motor is selling more EVs than General Motors are. That's true. I didn't just make that up. More EVs than General Motors. Anyway, gives you some perspective on what's really going on in the world. Neo. Neo sales were, I think, a massive disappointment. Neo spends enormous amounts of money. They sell cars in Europe. They have been for quite a while. They, yeah, I just don't understand what the heck is going on with this company. They actually make some really good cars now. The ET5 is a great car. Sales are just not there for the company. I don't think they ever will be, but who knows? They do make really good products. But for some reason, their CEO, I think he's just, just does a lot of talking. I think they need to do more delivering and less talking. 15,959 deliveries for Neo. I have to admit, I'm a little bit biased here. I feel like Neo made a lot of promises, didn't deliver on those promises. Therefore, my stock price went down. Uh, I lost a fair bit of money on my Neo stock. I just ended up selling at a pretty significant loss because I decided the company had an enormous spending habit, almost like someone who's like addicted to cocaine, just can't break the habit. And all of a sudden, Neo have been forced by investors, by the banks. They've been forced to slow down their spending. Now, I critiqued Neo spending for months here on the channel. I talked about how they're putting themselves in a position of bankruptcy. The Chinese government agreed with me. The Chinese media agree with me. The international media agree with me. They, in, After I said that, not saying they even saw what I said, they probably didn't. But my point is here that people critiqued what I was saying. They were very negative saying I was bashing Neo. Then everyone else, every financial analyst said, it's true. Neo are spending like crazy. They had to go to the markets to try and raise money. Otherwise, they couldn't have paid their staff salaries. There was numerous articles about that on wall street journal and all of a sudden the company um, was able to get some funding but at the same time they had to agree to slow down spending so their ceo maybe had to agree to stop bashing other car companies he loves to bash other car companies not a positive i don't see the point of doing that for example jim farley herbert deese what things they did that i really liked was build others up say good things about them that doesn't hurt you but neo ceo has a bit of a habit of bashing other car companies tesla he does it Anyway, Neo sales, I still think they're disappointing. 15,960. As you can see, there's completely, relatively unknown car companies in China that are beating them. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. And let's put some context here. Compare it to BYD's deliveries, 301,000 versus 16,000. Yeah. Anyway, Zika. Now, Zika, in my opinion, make even better electric cars than Neo. And they have a distribution base already worldwide. It's called Volvo. Parent company is Geely. Zika cars will be sold in Europe under the Volvo banner, not with the Volvo brand. They'll have the Zika brand, but they make some great EVs. And this definitely have, I think, more potential than most other Chinese EV companies, probably all of them except for BYD. BYD and Zika are probably going to be the two most successful international brands from China over the next few years. Zika sales hit pretty much the same number as last month. They delivered. 13,104 vehicles, which for them is pretty good compared to last year when they delivered nowhere near that many in the same month. Growth of 73.6% versus November of last year. Guys, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Don't hold back. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.